basically it came to my mind about uh, now is not the time to shrink back. Right. Now is not the time to shrink back. Um, That's a good word. Now is not the, it's, uh, now is not the time to shrink back uh, uh, just to, to stay, stay safe and cozy on our couches, uh, in, in, our, in our living rooms, uh, or wherever, wherever your uh, safety net is. It's time to uh, uh, cast your nets on the other side of the boat, uh, so to speak. As, you know, they were fishing all night. And they weren't getting results, and so Jesus said, "Did you catch any fish?" And then, then they said, uh, "They said we haven't caught any fish all night." And so Jesus says, "Cast your nets on the other side of the boat." These are experienced fishermen. <laughs> They're experienced fishermen. I'm serious. They're like, they gotta be thinking, isn't the same fish gonna be on this side of the boat that's on this side of the boat? You know, these fishermen that have been fishing all night. And so, when you when you listen and obey the wisdom of the Lord. Uh, he'll bring fish uh, where there was no fish or he'll give you wisdom or he'll help you to do things, something that, that seems impossible or ridiculous, if you, if you will, uh, and it'll, it'll, it'll work out. But it, so it's time to stay out of our comfort zone. It's, it's time to, to continue to grow uh, and, and go forward. Uh, sometimes, I was talking uh, before we started with a couple of guys, sometimes for the church overall, it's, it's almost... Uh, harder to get the church going when it's comfortable. Uh, we see it, uh, but when sometimes the church accelerates more under persecution. Uh, but I think that the church is capable of both. Uh, here's Acts 8, just briefly here. Uh, it says in Acts 8, 1, Saul was consenting to his death. Uh, that was the death of Stephen. At the time, a great persecution arose. We can go to deeper another time, but it says a great persecution arose against the church. Not against the building. They didn't really have buildings at that time that I know of, but against the church, God's people, that were following Jesus. They were following the way of Jesus, uh, which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria. So this is Jerusalem, Judea, and a little further, Samaria. And that's, uh, you can refer back actually to Acts 1.8. Uh, that's part of the mission. Uh, so it says here, Acts 8.1. Uh, except the apostles, and it says, verse 2, And devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church. He made some serious havoc of the church. And there's a few things that accompanied that havoc was entering every house and dragging off men and women, committing them to prison. They would, he would go into houses and take them out and bring them to prison. And, uh, and so even through that difficulty, a great persecution, there's, some, there's someone named Saul and probably others under him uh, that's going house to house, taking people out, bringing them to prison. And uh, I guess they started their own prison ministry. Others did. And he was examples of others doing prison ministry. Um, but verse 4 uh, they, did, they still, through all that, verse 4, I love Philip. This is uh, just a, a side note. This is chapter 8 of Acts, probably one of my favorite chapters in all the Bible. Um, Acts 8, 4. Uh, they did not shrink back through all that persecution, people being killed, people taken to prison. They, they still did not shrink back because uh, their, their love for Jesus and their obedience to these commands was, uh, was, was far greater. Verse 4 of, of chapter 8. It says, Therefore, those who were scattered... Those who were scattered, they went everywhere. Poor me, poor me. What am I going to do? No, sorry. They did not. They went everywhere preaching the gospel. It says they went everywhere. They were scattered. They were scattered because of persecution, but they went everywhere. They were scattered preaching the word of God, it says. They were preaching the gospel. They were preaching. They were teaching. And there are so many other examples uh, of right here of what happened. Uh, verse 5, it, it lists someone specifically by name, Philip. They went down to the city of Samaria. Philip went down to the city and through preaching, this is the way he went, he went down to the Samaria and, and he preached Christ to them. He made Christ the central message. He made Christ the, the gospel. Him uh, died, uh, excuse me, crucified, died and resurrected. He preached Christ to them. And verse 6, the preaching of the gospel is it works. It works. The preaching of the gospel is what works and what we have to continue to preach and teach uh, and equip people with. We want to equip 
the church equipped the body of Christ with the gospel. This is so relevant right now because uh, we cannot uh, water down God's word and we, and we cannot uh, uh, add to God's word, but we must continue to preach the gospel to him. We've seen, all of us here have seen in some shape or fashion, we've seen the preaching of the gospel and we've seen it work. We've seen people respond to the gospel. We've seen them respond negatively, and we've seen them respond positively. We've seen uh, all, all kinds of uh, responses, and we have seen responses with people heeding the things spoken. We've seen responses uh, in our community and across other cities. And it says right here in verse 6, uh, the multitudes. So he was preaching Christ to them, but it's, and, and, the, and the multitudes are hearing, and the multitudes with one accord, it says, heeded the things spoken by Philip. Uh, there's a lot of times uh, Bible in the Bible, unity is spoken of, or, or things being in one accord. You can see uh, even even back back in the Old Testament, they they had unity, but in different capacity, they had unity to do evil. Uh, they built a tower of Babel. They, they had unity built in a tower. They had unity in the Old Testament in different ways. And but God wants right here to see a demonstration uh, of of God having unity, and they're hearing and they're responding to the to the gospel. And they're, hear, they're heeding the things uh, spoken by Philip. Spoken by Philip and hearing and seeing. They're hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. We've seen miracles here. And, and uh, I was talking to one of the guys at Teen Challenge. They're watching a video. as a documentary. And in this documentary, uh, uh, piggybacking off the scripture, they're, they're in this documentary, they're actually in Tanzania, a different part of Tanzania. I'm not sure where it was. Somewhere in Tanzania. And they're having this crusades. And... Uh, they were having the worship, they were preaching, they had an altar call, and when they had the altar call, people would start manifesting demons. And he said that tent over to the right is what uh, kind of uh, surprised him, or for lack of a better word, or ruined him, he said, is that when they started manifesting, they would carry these people to the tent, and that's where they would continue the deliverance on these people in the, in the tent. You know, it was a good size. Uh, white tent off to the side. And so the miracles still happen today. Deliverance still happens and it still needs to happen. And so the miracles which they did, so that word hearing and seeing, there was a manifestation, there was evidence of the miracles here in some fashion. Uh, it could have been, you know, we could speculate, but hearing and seeing the miracles, maybe it was physical healings, maybe it was deliverance. Um, but actually right here in verse 7, there was, there was more evidence. Verse 7 says, more for unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many who were possessed and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed and there was great joy in the city. And so deliverance is still needed for today. And uh, people are still need to be healed today and still for today. And it says, after that, verse 8, I love it, it says there is great joy in the city. Man, wouldn't it be amazing to continue to go out in the Superior Duluth in these areas and, and preach and teach and we're going to continue but then see even more and more evidence of, of that. You know, go into uh, somewhere in this area and, and, uh, and see miracles happening. Wouldn't, wouldn't that be awesome? We, we've seen a bus ministry where there's a young man. Uh, we'll call him Bob. When in doubt, we're going to call people Bob. And so his name is Bob. And, and his mother, you know, uh, uh, he wanted to get set free from drugs. And he, we, we met his mother, too. I mean, his, actually, uh, and so wouldn't it be amazing if, if people like Bob and others got completely set free from drugs, completely set free from those things, and then went into Teen Challenge for discipleship or other places for discipleship. And so we want to continue to bring joy to the city, joy to the families, uh, everybody. So I uh, just wanted to give uh, encouragement with that time. It's not time to, to, not time to shrink back, not time to draw back. It's time to get God's wisdom, God's counsel for fishing for men. The disciples, they got, God's, they got the counsel from the Lord Jesus himself to counsel for fishing for fish uh, in, in that, what I referenced earlier. And so God can give us counsel and wisdom for fishing for men. It says Matthew 4.19, uh, I've shared hopefully before. It says, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. So out of this abiding relationship with Jesus, he will give us the ability and the and the uh, the skills uh, to walk out the Great Commission and fish for men.